is on because the hair is a mess. I don't care. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, just welcome in general. Today, we're going to be talking about bad bitch characters, okay? The heroines that are full of spice, zest, confidence. I just want to give these characters a moment, right? Because it's not often that you come across a heroine, like a female character, in a romance novel that's a bad bitch. Someone that knows what they want, someone that knows who they are, someone who's confident with their sexuality. It's a vibe, it's a vibe. There needs to be more characters, female characters like this. Because the thing is, when you read a like powerful female character, you kind of like adopt, <laughs> you adopt their personality and you're like, yeah, yeah, bitch, that's right. I do love myself, yes, bitch. I know what I like sexually, yes. And I'm not, I'm not afraid of that. There's no shame when it comes to that. Authors, take note. Take note, write more characters, female characters, that are boss-ass bitches, okay? Before we start this video, and before I get into the book recommendations, this video is actually sponsored by Beducated. If you're unaware of what Beducated is, it's kind of like an online streaming platform, like Netflix, but it's all like sexual wellness and education. Today, I want to focus on the female orgasm, just because a lot of women in the world struggle, okay? They struggle orgasming. They struggle hitting the spot, baby boo. Uh, so if you're one of those women, having the access to a platform like this is excellent. You'll be able to learn more about yourself, your sexuality. Okay, so this is exciting. I'm like recording myself while filming my screen. I'm so tech savvy. Anyway, I just wanted to show you like the website, what it looks like. Hand job mastery. Look at that. We want to go to the explore section. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Here we go. We're going to explore. Honestly, guys, look at the amount of um, courses there are. Fisting, fingering, rough sex, sexual confidence. Oh, building your self-esteem in and out of the bedroom. I like that one. Oh, menstrual cycle wellness. This is a good one. Oh, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Female orgasm. So whatever course that you want to watch, you just click on. This one's one hour, 10 minutes long. And this is like a map of what the course looks like. There's hundreds of courses, all different things. But they do focus a lot on uh, like sexual pleasure for women and stuff like that, just because it is a subject that is still considered taboo. And with platforms like Beducated, hopefully that stigma will eventually disappear with time. So if you're interested in Beducated, checking out the website and the streaming service for yourself, I do have a coupon code, which is just Mary, and it gives you 70% off your yearly pass. And this is a subscription service, so there is a monthly fee. But if you use my code, as I said, that will give you 70% off your yearly pass. So yeah, boo, you should check that out. I'll leave the links down below. So with that all said, thank you, Beducated. Let's get into the video. Okay, straight off the bat, this first book, I'm not recommending the heroine, the main character. I'm recommending the side character, which is Natalie. So this is Hush Hush by Lucia Franco. This is my favorite novel of all time. It's about a 21 year old student who is currently in college, living in New York City, and she decides to become a elite escort in New York. But I wanted to recommend this character, Natalie, who is Audrey's best friend, because oh my God, there's just something about this woman <laughs> that I can admire. She is just a boss ass bitch, okay? She's confident. She's confident within herself, um, sexually, mentally, emotionally. She is just one of those characters that you know that if you were friends with her in real life, she'd always have your back. I loved the love interest. I loved the conflict between the couple, but Natalie being a side character just elevated this book so much more. Um, and there is a little bit of a plot twist in this book to do with Natalie, which throws you through a loop. Obviously this is around escorting and Audrey, her best friend, who is the main character in this book, she struggled a lot with accepting the fact that she was an escort. Like, there was a lot of stereotyping and she struggled internally where Natalie owned the industry. Melody from Ruthless People. So this is a mafia series actually. And I haven't read this for a long time, but I just remember reading Melody and I was like, wow, you are a boss ass bitch, obviously. So Melody is head of the Italian mob and then 
Callum is head of the Irish mob and they come together and they get married. There's a bit of confusion with Callum when they get together because he thinks he's going to be running the Italian and the Irish mob, just him. But Melanie has been training her entire life to run the mafia. She has been running it privately behind the scenes while her father's been sick. Um, so he's caught off guard by her because he's like, hang on, you're meant to be like this quiet woman that I'm meant to marry and you're just meant to not even really acknowledge the mafia world where Melody comes into the game and she's like, no bitch, this is my mafia. If we're getting married, we're running it together. There was just certain scenes where she made decisions in the mafia, arguments that she had with Callum, she defended herself, she defended the mafia and she made really good decisions. She was just a strong female character, one that I've never come across before, and it's unfortunate that there's not more novels with characters like her in it. Because we all know with the mafia trope, it's typically um, like the shy girl who's like scared of her husband, it's an arranged marriage, and they're quite complacent with just um, getting married and then not getting involved in the mafia business. Like I like reading female characters that take on the job, that want to be a part of it and want to learn the business, like I just love that. Bristol, oh my God, Bristol from the Grip Trilogy. The first book is called Flow. I struggled personally liking Bristol just because her personality like clashed with mine when I was reading her. Um, but there was so much to admire about her. I have done a video based on this whole entire trilogy. So this series is quite political. There's a lot going on. It is about an interracial relationship already there's tension within their relationship uh, because both their families don't approve because of who they are. Um, and Bristol is constantly like having to battle society and the world because no one thinks that she should be with Grip. And because of that, she internally feels like that too. There was a lot of scenes that Kennedy wrote in this book to do with um, like the gap between white women and black women. Um, and she portrayed it so well. It was so well written. And I have to give it to Bristol, man. She held her ground in such a respectful way um, without turning petty. She really tried to understand what these women were trying to get across. Um, it was uncomfortable to read. She never bowed, but she was respectful about her choices of words and her opinions were well thought out. Even when she was less educated, she was constantly wanting to learn more and to understand more, so therefore she chose to educate herself. She's also a manager in the music industry, so she is one of the top dogs in the business, um, and she just knows how to market her clients, and there was just something so powerful about her character. It did annoy me in the end because she was quite stubborn, um, but she did crack finally, and yeah, I just, I ended up loving Bristol in the end, but at the beginning, not so much. Harley Rose, okay, this is the heroine from Good Gone Bad, Bad by Gianna Darling. This is an MC based romance series. Each uh, book is a companion novel, but the plot underneath all the books intertwines and connects. This is one of the most unrated books in the series because Harley, oh my God, did that woman have bulls? <laughs> she was such a strong woman and she honestly took on so many issues that she didn't need to take on um, that she could have fought with an army behind her, especially you know, with her father being an MC president, but she chose to do it on her own because she wanted to handle things and she wanted to protect her family. She's just a character that you can read the words off the pages and know that she is strong, that she does not doubt herself, um, that she will protect her family at all costs, even if that means putting herself in danger. She's so unapologetically her. This one particularly is quite interesting sexually, especially like the sex scenes. She ends up having a relationship with the cop in the town, which is kind of taboo because she is the MC president's daughter. Um, and they explore some kind of like BDSM type of sex and stuff. And Harley ends up learning so much about herself sexually once she starts experimenting with the hero in this book. When you read a character like that, um, it makes you feel better about yourself and what turns you on, whatever may tickle your fancy and it gives you like that confidence boost. I know a lot of women 
struggle in the bedroom when it comes to confidence and reading like a character like this just gives you the fire and you're like oh yeah okay I know what I want I'm gonna adopt everything that she's doing and apply it to myself next up is Gianna from Bound by Hatred which is a novel in the uh, Born in Blood Mafia Chronicles by Cora Riley which is one of my favorite series of all time this book was interesting I'm not gonna lie, Gianna does annoy you because she is just so stubborn and stuck in her ways. There's no persuading her to think differently than what she already does. Like, she's just so stubborn. But the one thing that I admired the most about this character uh, was the fact that she did not buckle under pressure and she did not bow down to the mafia. Like, she was raised in a golden cage. She was told, how to live, what was expected of her, um, and that she would marry eventually and be the perfect little mafia bride. Um, and she just didn't want a bar of it. She was not interested. She didn't want to live the mafia life. Um, so she ran. Didn't end up well for her. But um, even with all these intimidating men in her life, the person she ends up marrying, her father, who treats her very poorly, um, she never backed down. She always like had a stiff spine, her shoulders were rolled back, and she always looked them in the eye. A lot of female characters, especially in this kind of setting and plot, uh, you know, with the mafia trope, they back down as soon as like a man raises their voice or they become afraid, they get scared and all these things where Gianna never did. Um, she could look her dad straight in her eyes and cop a backhand in the face and she wouldn't even shed a tear. Um, she was so strong. As I said, a lot of that's connected to her stubbornness, which was annoying, but, and her stubbornness does get repetitive throughout the book. But it's just nice to read like a mafia bride that's not going to cower. Okay, so that's it for today's video. There is tons of female characters that I know that are badass bitches that I could recommend in this in this video, but I need to read the books. I haven't read the books yet. Like Lana from the Mindfuck series. Everyone on Instagram told me that she is like a badass boss ass bitch. So I want to read her. I'm not I'm not going to put her in the video today. Maybe in a different video I could talk about her once I read the book. But yeah, I'm excited to read her. I just yeah, I just feel like strong female characters are very hard to come across. Especially when there's like sexuality and like sex scenes involved. Like most authors write like, you know, the girls are so shy in the, in the bedroom and they're blushing and stuff. So it's, it's good to read like a female character that's like, mm, let's get it on. Don't forget to check out Beducated and do not forget about my coupon code that will give you 70% off your yearly pass. I got your back, boo. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to thumbs it up. It helps me out so much. Also, subscribe before leaving. Social media links are down below. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.